Acids and bases. Weak acids. They've got a very low concentration of hydrogen plus ion. They ionize partly and have a pH of around 4 to 6. And examples of weak acids would be citric acid and ethanoic acid or carbonic acid as well. Strong acids. These have a high concentration of H plus ions. They have um, a pH of around 0 to 3 and they ionize completely. Examples of this would be hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid or even nitric acid. Weak alkalis. These have a low concentration of OH minus ions. They ionize partly and have a pH of around 8 to 10. Examples of this would be ammonia. Strong alkalis. These have a pH of around 11 to 14 and they ionize completely and, um, and have a high concentration of OH minus ions. And examples of this would be sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. Ionization is just when the compound splits into ions in a solution. While comparing the strengths of acids and alkalis, you have to make sure that your concentration or the molarity is the same between both the acid and the alkali. Otherwise, you won't get the right result. Neutralization is just when you add an acid and a base to get a salt and water. So basically, acid plus base gives you salt and water. That is neutralization. Alkali. Alkalis are a type of base which is soluble in water. Bases are just anything that um, neutralize an acid. But alkalis are specific. They're a type of base and they are soluble. Bronsted and Lowry's theory. This is based on Arrhenius theory. And um, they say that acids are proton donors, where the protons are actually the H plus ions. And alkalis are proton acceptors, or bases are proton acceptors. And the protons are H plus, you know, ions. And Bronsted and Lowry's theory was easily accepted compared to Arrhenius's because. Bronsted and Lowry built their idea from the previous Arrhenius one. And Bronsted and Lowry also kind of, at the time that they came up with this, um, the society was also more aware of um, ionization and so on. But um, Arrhenius' um, time wasn't really aware of these things and he was very intelligent but he wasn't recognized for it until later. Hydration. Hydration is when H plus ions are surrounded by water molecules to keep them inside the solution. A bit like they pressure the um, H plus ions, like they trap it under the water. And a hydrated proton would have the symbol H plus and in brackets AQ, which stands for aqueous or in a solution. In solutions, Acids ionize into H plus ions and alkalis ionize into OH minus ions. Titration reaction. Titration is used to determine the pH or the molarity of a substance. It is also used to find the volumes of solutions that react together completely. I will repeat it again. Titrations are used to determine the pH or the molarity of a substance and they're also used to find the volumes of substances in a solution that react completely. The equipment you would need to do a titration reaction would be a burette, a volumetric pipette, a conical flask and a beaker. First of all you use the pipette to accurately measure a certain volume of the alkali and pour it into the conical flask. 
then you add an appropriate indicator. If you do not add the indicator, then you really won't be able to do this reaction. The indicator is very, very vital. And then you add the acid into the conical flask using the burette, but very gently, drop by drop. But you do have to um, make sure you note down the start point. And um, when the solution in the flask changes color, the end point is reached. So you quickly turn off your burette and you note the end point and you calculate the amount or the volume of water, I mean, sorry, the volume of the acid which you've used. And for this reaction to work and for you to see the end point clearly, at least one of the substances needs to be strong. And the indicators you could use are, you could have used are, um, if you're using a strong acid and a strong alkali, you could use any acid and base um, indicator. But if you're using a strong acid and a weak alkali, then your end point will come below 7 because of a strong acid, and then you would have to use methyl orange. And if you're using a weak acid and a strong alkali, then your end point would be beyond 7, pH of 7. And so you would have to use the indicator phenolphthalein. And don't worry about the spelling because the examiners allow you. And this titration reaction is a quantitative analysis and it's repeated several times to make it more reliable. And if you take the average, you make it more accurate as well. And you can use your results from a titration reaction to find the concentration of substances um, which you do not know about. So you do. Um, so you times the concentration and the volume of the substance you do know and divided by the volume of the substance you do not know to get the concentration of the unknown substance. Then make sure you pay attention to the moles of the reactants and the known substances in this actual calculation because many people lose marks on that and I'm one of them who forget these things. In the calculations, this um, piece of chemistry 3 requires you to know are uh, mass equals Mr. Mole. Easy to remember, catchy. Moles equal the concentration times volume. And moles also equal, in other words, the same thing repeated, molarity times the volume. And to change moles per decimeter cubed into grams per decimeter cubed, you've got to times moles per decimeter cubed by the MR of the chemical. Remember this, one decimeter cubed equals 1000 centimeter cubed. And that is a very important information and that's acid and bases done.